everybody, welcome back. My name is Abby, I'm with Fitness is Medicine. Today we're gonna do another great workout you can do in your home with very minimal equipment. We're gonna use body weight, we're going to use a fit ball, we're going to use uh, one set of dumbbells and that is it. Um, also, if you have a chair nearby, we'll also use a chair. So we're gonna start off on the floor. Remember to come into these workouts warmed up and ready to go. Get your heart rate up a little bit, five to 10 minutes of a cardio workout, get those muscles warmed up and ready to move. Okay, we're gonna try a moving push-up. So there's a few different ways we can do this. If you are doing push-ups on your counter or your bar area or your kitchen counter or something like that, you can move along um, kind of like you're doing kind of walking planks, do a push-up and then go back. If you're doing them on your knees, um, I'm going to demonstrate knees and on the floor here. So what we're going to do is go back and forth five times. So it will end up being 10 push-ups, but it will um, be back and forth five times. The other thing is this is more challenging, obviously. So if you need to do fewer, that's fine. Do four each way or three each way, but try, just give it a try. Um, if you're on your toes, what we're going to do is push up, move, move, push up and then we'll go back so that was one so this would be two going back that's two now if you need to do these on your knees what you can do is pivot so I'm on my knees one push up pivot over here two push up so I'm still getting the benefit of the push up and the movement so we're getting a little bit of Kind of moving plank with a push up in between. We're going to go one more each way. Two and push up. All right, good. So you can try those any way that I just said. You can do them, you know, kind of along the wall. You can do them along your countertop, your kitchen sink area, on your floor, on your knees, or give it a shot on your toes, depending on where you are with that exercise. Okay. Now we're going to stand up, so remember to stand up nice and slowly. And we're going to do a split stance lunge or a split stance squat, sometimes it's called, um, depending on what you're comfortable with. So do this next to your kitchen counter or somewhere sturdy. So we're going to be in a nice big wide stance. Um, and we're going to do a little bit of a twist. Actually, I'm going to start this way. So. Get a nice long wide stance somewhere where you can balance, hang on to like a chair or a kitchen counter or something like that. We're going to go straight down. So we're gonna go down, turn, back. So if you can do the twist, or you have your kitchen counter here, twist towards the kitchen counter. Now I want you to twist when you're down in that lunge the keys to this lunge or this split stand squat are putting your weight in that front heel. So notice my knee is over my heels. And then just like you're just gonna go down on your knee here. That's the, that's the form. Now, if you want to, you can add a weight here. You can hold onto a dumbbell and twist. Um, whatever you wanna do, to, um, if you need to make this a little bit more challenging, now we're going to switch sides. So I'm going to turn around, keep my screen alive there. So it's a really nice wide stance. If your feet are too close, it's going to be hard to be a good form. Like your knees are going to be awkward. So you want to be really long here. And like I said, have something nearby for that balance. So twist and then twist towards that front knee. Down, twist down, twist. So we're getting some core in here, holding that squat for a little while. So I don't know if you were counting, but I did seven on that first one. These are a little more challenging. If you want to go all the way to 10, that's great. Like I said, you can hold a weight here. Um, the next level up would be to maybe hold a little bit lighter weight out here and then twist. And then you're really going to engage your back, your core. So take that into account. If you do have any back injury, 
don't put the weight out here. Keep it close or don't do a weight at all. Okay, great. Okay, now we're going to grab a set of dumbbells. We're gonna be doing shoulder press, so probably a medium weight. Pick them up nice and slowly with good form. I want you to alternate, and actually we're gonna sit on a ball if you have one. If you don't have a ball, you can do these standing. You can do them seated on a chair or you know the side of your bed or something like that. When you do a shoulder press, it does put um, some pressure through your back. So if you know you have a back injury, be very careful about your shoulder press. Do a little bit lighter weight and make sure you do it seated. And that, that should help you in that also keeping your core um, very tight. Now you can either do them out to the side like this, or we're gonna do one at a time, alternating, two, or you can bring them in here, three, and just push it straight up overhead. It's totally up to you. It works the shoulders a little bit differently, but you can do it either way. Or you could do one set this way, and then for the next set, switch and go the other way. Make sure you keep breathing. I'm just gonna keep alternating so you keep having something to look at if you're needing something for your form. Keeping that core nice and tight. One more each way. And 10. All right, good. Now when you do that, make sure you're keeping everything level. So my shoulders are staying level even though I'm pressing one up at a time. So I don't want you, you know, doing this type of thing. I want to keep everything nice and stable, using that core to keep everything tight and in line. Okay, now we're going to stand back up. So we'll kick this ball out of our way. And we're going to do some punch punches. So we're going to do some punch jabs. So I want your feet nice and wide apart. What we're going to do is punch forward and then out to the side. So you're going to kind of be, you know, if you think of like a boxer, you're kind of fluid, you're moving, you're in that athletic stance, your knees and your hips are, are engaged, loose, tummy tight. So just like I'm gonna sucker punch you, keep that tummy tight, like you're gonna guard against that. So start with your hands here. We're gonna do 10 on each side. So we're gonna punch, jab, punch, jab. Like I said, I'm kind of moving, floating with it. This is five, six, Seven, keep this other hand up here. Eight, nine, give it a good jab. Ten, ten. So when you start this, if you've never done this before, do the range of motion to start with to kind of get used to it and then get a little bit harder as you go and then just kind of see how it feels. Punch, jab, punch, jab, punch, jab. Keep this other hand up here like you're boxing. Five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, and ten. All right, good. That feels good. It's kind of fun. Okay, now we're going to lower back down to the floor and use your ball. And we're going to do a hip extension. So on the ball, like this, you're just supporting yourself with your fingertips here. There's not a lot of pressure here. We just want to be a nice straight line, keeping your head in line with your spine here. We're going to lift up those feet off the ground at the same time, keeping your feet together, and then lower that back down. So we're doing a hip extension here, really working on those glutes, keeping those knees straight, and keeping your feet close together too. Or you can even think about squeezing your feet together just a little, get a little adductor in there too. Six. So when you come up to this, you should be in a nice, Straight line. Breathing, really work on breathing with that tummy on the ball. Keeping your head in line with the rest of your spine. Also, keep your shoulders down. Keep those shoulders out of it. Your shoulders don't need to be involved here. And if you're really Keeping everything really engaged, you should be feeling this in your core just a little bit as well. Helping to support those hips and rest. All right, good. That one feels good. 
Now we're going to grab that chair for the last one. And we're going to do those double knee lifts. We've done them in the past. And it works really well to do these on like an exercise bench, something that's nice and flat, a kitchen chair. The edge of the bed might be a little difficult, but I want your hands underneath your thighs. Make sure your shoulders are down away from your ears. You're just gonna kind of press into your hands and I want your body to stay where it is. No rocking back and forth. Almost think crunching towards those knees. Three, four. See if you can get them both off the ground at the same time. Five, six, seven, breathe, eight, nine, and 10. All right, good. Those are really one of those that don't look very hard until you start to try it, but it's a really great way to work your core um, in a different way than, you know, sit-ups. I don't, if, if you notice, I don't do a lot of sit-ups, so there's a lot of really great ways to involve that core. Make sure you're strong here, give you that foundation and that stability. Okay, go through those one or two more times, add some cardio, make sure you follow up with a good stretch and cool down. So if you have any questions or need any um, alterations or variations, please feel free to leave a message in the comments or you can private message me as well. Thank you everybody, have a great workout.